Hi everybody, thanks for booking into my workshop. Here's a little tutorial to support the information that I gave you in the workshop. Okay, so we're threading our loom. That's what we start with. Obviously we need to thread a loom to be able to weave. So we just want to make sure that that first length through the first notch at the top, it doesn't matter if it's the left or the right hand side, is nice and long, at least as long as the board, and that we're securing it with our fingers so that as we wrap around, we've got a nice tension. We want to trim another long piece and tie these diagonally across the back of the loom. Um, sometimes I'm able to do this with ease, sometimes I'm not, and today my way too long nails are in the way. So I'm just going to do that again. <laughs> and second time's a charm. It's handy if you've got somebody that can pop their finger in there to secure it for you, but I rarely do in the studio. Okay, voila. So that's the back, the front. We've got a nice tension so everything snaps back to where it should be. So we're going to create the header and from now on when we're using our yarn we're going to pre-cut the yarn into the approximate rows that we need. So we'll be doing three rows. So I've approximately measured three rows. I've given myself more rather than less. I'm threading the chunky tapestry needle and I'm going to start underneath one of the warp threads. I'm weaving a little bit higher on the loom because it's a bit tight down the bottom. And then I'm pulling all the way through so that there's a small tail. You really don't want it to be more than two or three centimeters. To make sure we're creating a nice tension throughout our work, we wanna gently ease down either side so we create that nice arch. And then to neaten our work, we're going to tuck in that little tail. And that's a process that or technique that we'll be repeating throughout the wall hanging. Where my yarn is going over the top of the end warp thread, I want to then wrap around it and go under that warp thread for the second row. I want to make sure I'm not pulling tight on this one either. So we don't want to pull tight so that our end warp threads are anything but parallel. So we want them to kind of maintain that nice parallel straightness. Um, use that arch to maintain the tension. Weaving back for the final row for this header. Just going to hold my finger on the end there to help create that arch so I'm not pulling in too much on the edge. And then I'm trimming so once again I've got that little tail that I'm going to tuck in. This time however I'm going to tuck it between the row I've just completed and the row below. And that makes sure that when you start weaving on top of your work, you're not confused as to whether you start over under on one end or under over on the other end. It's all the, the same all the way along. Voila, there we have a header, ta-da. So the next step is to create the Ryan Arch and you may wonder what's happening here. So. I'm just asking my intern to grab me the board so I can wrap my yarn around and then we both realise it's right here next to me and in the interim I was being silly so that's that. Okay so wrapping around you can count if you like I don't I just do a random amount I love that hole in the back <coughs> excuse me which helps to easily chop chop those threads off and there's a nice even bundle there. So we want to isolate the first two warp threads. So we just pop each side through the center of those two warp threads. That's my first side. Sometimes I twist the bundle around my fingers if it's not quite behaving properly. Um, just to make sure I get everything through, I'm reaching through and grabbing the other side, making sure it's even and then pulling down. Ta -da! It doesn't matter that those warp threads are being pulled together. And when you do your second row, as a reminder, you skip the first warp thread and you move.
move to the threads in between the warp threads in between the, the first row so you may remember with the roving that we had a nice thick piece that we split to get the thickness that we wanted you can use it um, the thickness as is though it doesn't matter it's what your personal preference is but I do generally split, split mine we're just plain weaving that through and pulling the little clouds through the warp threads so I'll just adjust that one and you want at least a couple of rows of these to see the benefit of those nice clouds it does look a little bit more effective when you have more than one row and every time you weave a row just like your regular plain weaving you want to make sure that you're weaving in the opposite under over action to the previous row um, and that just makes sure the placement of those little puffy clouds are not just sitting on top of each other. It's kind of got a little bit more of an organic, random look and feel to it. So I'm just doing three rows here. And of course you can go all the way across if you like, but I've just done a little bundle on the side. Now I'm going to show you the loops. So my go-to um, length of yarn is just a double arm span if I'm sort of doing something that's continuous like the loops or the sumac, which is the plaited technique. And I always double the yarn over because you get a little bit more loop bang for your buck. And then I start with the folded end because that is already a little loop there that we can start with. And the approach to this technique is similar to the rye knot, but instead of pulling the yarn all the way through, we're just pulling two loops through between those two warp threads that we've isolated. And don't forget to have all of the yarn heading in the direction that you're moving in. And here I'm just asking Courtney if she wouldn't mind doing an overhead shot so that you guys can see what I'm doing a little bit more clearly. And voila oh um oh yeah i've just popped this in because i forgot to show you that once you've done your header header you can pop your um header in so you can just slip it behind the warp threads push it to the top and turn it at a right angle to the loom and it will help all those warp threads stand up nicely voila and help with the tension Okay, we're doing the double arm span pre-dispense length, but here I'm jumping into the sumac. So I'm actually doing a thickness of four with about an eight ply yarn. And you'll get an overhead shot of this one too, so you can see more clearly what I'm doing. So what I do is I wrap the beginning of the yarn around the first warp thread a few times and that just anchors it in place and then I can kind of tuck it in later. The key for me for this particular technique which is the technique that gives you that plaited look is to pull all the yarn into my lap and to just work with the end of the yarn and that helps my brain and my fingers remember what I'm doing as opposed to kind of being a bit overwhelmed by a handful of yarn so just wrap it around the first warp thread pull everything into your lap hold on to the end and then we're just going back around the next warp thread and I'm not pulling tight because I don't want to lose that shape now you can pull tight you can do it super thick you can do it super thin and you will get the feel for it based on the material that you're using. So you can see the bottom of that plait's happening and I'm just going through and adjusting how much I've kind of got the, that little shape standing up. Now when I'm going to go back in the other direction I'm going to loop around the warp thread twice and that creates that first shape heading back in the other direction and it makes sure the yarn is all heading in that direction as well and then we do the same thing but in the opposite direction which is sometimes a bit of a 
head spin. So just flip your loom upside down if that helps or just sort of persevere and maybe just watch this little section a few times to help wrap your head around it. But you can see already we've got that little opposite angle happening which gives us that plait or that fishtail effect. And two more and I haven't shown you how to you know kind of tuck the ends in with this one but basically you, you can just kind of feed it back through the center of the plait um, you know just trim a little tail and feed it back through the center and it should just kind of disappear into the work and you know just tuck it behind the the wall hanging so if you just get into the habit of doing that each time you're doing a row or a technique then you don't have to do so much kind of fixing up and cleaning up of things at the end. Okay, we've jumped around a little bit because my editing skills aren't fantastic. So we're back to a, an overhead shot of creating the loops. So once again, like the Ryan knot, we're pulling a loop through the center of those two warp threads that we've isolated. And the key here really is, once you've got the loops through, you pinch them together and pull down firmly. And once you start the next couple across, you use a light hand so that you're not unraveling the work you've just done. When you go back in the other direction, you wanna go uh, use those in-between warp threads. And that just, once again, creates a nicer sort of aesthetic to your loops. They're not all sitting on top of each other in a row. Voila, voila. And this is something that once your hands and brain kind of get the hang of it, it all comes together quite quickly. So this was the other way that you can do sumac. So you basically just loop the first um, section or the halfway point, I suppose, of your yarn through the first warp thread. And then you're just pulling through each warp thread at a, t at a time or the double. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but... The key here is to separate them, put your fingers through, then grab the two. So I suppose if it helps you, once you get to this point, if you remember to always separate the two sections, then you bring them back together to pull them through. That might be helpful. So this is some people's preferred way of doing the, um, the sumac. And I would say for some materials, it would be my preferred method as well. It just really depends on what I'm, what I'm using. Um, and I'm making sure I'm not pulling too tight. And once again, you know, just push it down. Okay, so we've finished our wall hanging. We're now taking it off the loom. So we've cut across the back about a quarter of the way from the bottom. So we've given ourselves just enough to tie the warp threads into a double knot. And we do that all the way across the bottom. So the nice thing about this loom is that the wall hanging stays in its little notches. And it doesn't kind of all pop off. So it alleviates any anxiety about the whole thing falling apart. And just the last one. So that's the bottom secured. So now I've just flipped it over and I've eased the top warp threads out of the notches. I've just got rid of that little tie from the back of the loom. And now I'm once again doing a double knot to secure everything. At this point, you do want to make sure that when you are tying off, you're not tying off really firmly at one end and then loosely at another end. You want to maintain that nice straight edge all the way along. 
And as a reminder, when you're finishing your wall hanging, you want to finish off with a few rows of plain weave and make sure that's an, as straight as possible as well so that your stick sits nice and flush across the top of your work. Almost done. And if you're wondering what the scratches on my hand are, I don't have a kitten. I've got a 10 year old rescue cat who sometimes gets a little bit feisty. Okay, so now we add our stick and it can be any stick that you like. A nature stick, a chopstick. Some people are using wooden spoons, I've noticed on the interwebs. And then we want to secure the stick in place with a double knot on top. If you don't want to use the, the option of the fan, then you would just tie these behind the stick. So, and then you'd have to tie something separately onto the stick to hang your work. So you can have that option of having that clean effect without the fan, but you would just need to place your knots in a different area which is behind the stick not on top of the stick like we're doing here just making room for that last knot and just positioning so it does sit on top of the stick lovely Okay, and then I'm just going to get a little scrap of yarn to tie those threads together. Sometimes you'll have enough of the fan to actually tie it in, into a knot. It's neither here nor there, really. Oh, this is interesting. 